What's going on, agents? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and I hope everyone is doing well out there and staying safe. These are trying times for us all, whether it be emotionally, financially, or professionally, and all I can say is to keep your eyes trained, your head down, and your hearts open to anything you may encounter. And before I begin today's video, I would like to thank all my recent subscribers and welcome you all to my channel. And if you haven't yet smashed that sub button for dedicated division coverage, please do so. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. And with that, let's begin. This week has been extremely challenging for the entire Division II community and massive as it has navigated through Title Update 9 and the comedy of errors surrounding the M1A rifle. And just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, let me backtrack just a bit and give you a brief recap. Massive released the patch notes for its latest update, TU9, on Monday. And there were quite a few bug fixes, talent reworks, and exotic reroll mechanics unveiled. Now, I reviewed the entirety of those patch notes in a video that I uploaded on Monday, and although I didn't agree with or totally understand some of the changes, I did applaud certain portions of TU9. The exotic reroll mechanic was something that I have wanted installed for quite a while, along with some other little fixes I won't go into right now. Tuesday morning rolls around, players started logging in when TU9 had finished installing, and they immediately noticed that the gamer base's favorite rifle, the classic M1A, had received a whopping 40% base damage reduction. Now, allow me to draw just a bit of a parallel for you. Imagine back in Destiny, when everyone was grinding for the Galahorn, because it was the supreme rocket launcher in the game and did massive amounts of damage. I mean, once you had one, you never wanted to use any other heavy weapon because it was just that damn good. One day, Bungie comes along, drops an update on the game, and your godly Galahorn has been reduced to below average, and all without any prior notice that the changes were even incoming. Let the gamer riots begin, right? Jumping back to Division 2, and you can expect what happened next. The players immediately noticed that 40% reduction in damage to their favorite rifle looked at the patch notes, saw nothing about it, and assumed the worst. Now this was all occurring on Tuesday morning, and I started seeing the tweets about it early and actually went into the game myself and grabbed some screenshots and tweeted about it myself. Shortly thereafter, Massive edited the patch notes to include the notice of the 40% reduction in base damage to the M1A with the following community team comment. This change was intentional, and we apologize it was not in the original patch notes. Due to a lapse in communication, it didn't make it into the list. My initial reaction to this statement was probably like many of you, in that it did not sit well with me. This was the only bit of information originally missing from the patch notes that were initially released to the public on Monday. Nothing else was missing. No changes to Black Tusk drones, no reduction in the shotgun rusher, shredder talents. I mean, you get the point here. There was literally nothing missing from Monday to Tuesday except the 40% base damage reduction to the M1A. This was our Galahorn, and it was just nerfed to a level that it was outpaced by many other rifles, and what really stung was the fact that it was the only piece of information missing from the original patch notes to the edited version. Now, throughout the day on Tuesday, I continued to see angry tweets and comments all swirling around this mysterious M1A nerf, and as a whole, the base was not happy about it. Massive and the dev team are not deaf or blind to this public outcry against not only the change itself, but the way it was done, with no prior notice and how it was just added to the patch notes after their initial release. Wednesday rolls around and the Division game takes to the air with their state of the game address, and this is where I was truly shocked. Bruce took to the mic, and he did something I have been waiting to see for nearly four years. He told the truth, and he spoke from the heart with emotion. It wasn't some corporate bleached response about, we know you have concerns about this change and we're gonna look into it. He responded with a truthful answer and he told the gamer base that this change was not supposed to have been in TU9. Now I've been watching the state of the game streams for years and I'm not saying that guests prior to Bruce haven't told the truth, but what I am saying is that I have never seen it expressed in this raw form, if you know what I'm saying. He flat out told us that there was a balance pass planned for rifles and weaponry in general, why the M1A was so strong in comparison to other rifles, and he just laid it all out there. 
I was watching the stream with a friend of mine and we were both just so quiet and quite frankly shocked at all of this that was transpiring. For those of you that have been with me and my channel over the years that I have covered the Division franchise, you know I always strive to provide fair and balanced coverage to the game. I speak truth to power. I call out issues and mechanics that are not needed or are driven through corporate greed. But on the flip side, I give praise when it is called for. And it is my firm belief that in this case, amidst all this turmoil and confusion, that praise is in order. We all screw up in our daily lives. I mean, we all make mistakes, as it is only human. I often make mistakes in my videos, but when I do, I accept my mistakes and I affirm to others that I have indeed made a mistake. My point being, if and when you make a mistake, own it. And on Wednesday, Bruce, who was not the one responsible for the change, but on behalf of the entire dev team, owned it. The team stepped up and did what was needed to be done, and I can tell you that once Bruce made his statements, the tone of the stream chat changed. Not all of it, but a majority of the salty, rage-driven comments turned to a much softer tone. For me, it's absolutely amazing and refreshing to hear the unfiltered truth from a studio and publisher that seems to specialize in not saying too much and always walking the whitewashed corporate fine line. Friday has finally rolled around and the carpal tunnel cannon known as the M1A is back as the changes have been reverted to its original state with only a 20% base damage reduction staying intact for PvP. Now in hindsight, does the classic M1A need a balance pass? In my humble opinion, yes. Not anywhere close to the 40% reduction we saw on Tuesday, but it does need some tuning. Now, I don't PvP very much in this game and leave those itches to be scratched by Battlefield, so I wouldn't be the right person to sit here and preach about how it is OP in the PvP arena. In retrospect, as I look back on this week in the Division franchise's history, all I can say is, finally. For me, it feels like we've finally taken that first step towards a better and more positive relationship between studio and base. We've finally seen the studio step up, look us directly in the eyes, and tell us, hey, we screwed up. I, like so many other members of the community, have finally seen a bit of progress in our attempts to get UB Massive to treat us like equals and contributors in a unified plan to a mutual success. And for me, it feels like they finally have taken a look at all the ingredients needed to strengthen the bond between studio and player. And amazingly, it is not some complex recipe. It comes down to one simple, basic fundamental that can be both liberating and embarrassing. The truth. That's going to wrap it up on my side, and as always, I look forward to reading your thoughts in the comment section below. If you haven't yet done so, please smash that sub button for intense and dedicated Division content, and don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. If you liked the video, rate it with a thumbs up, if not with a thumbs down. If you feel like supporting my full-time YouTube content creation efforts, please look in the video description for links to my Patreon account and Buzz Boutique merchandise store. Follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts on most things gaming related with a heavy emphasis on the Division franchise. And until my next upload, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.